play at Novabet. Hello, and thank you for joining us again for another edition of the Irish Angle in, associ- in association with Novabet. Um, as usual, I've Emma Nagel, Johnny Ward, both here. We're going to discuss all the things that happened in the last week. Quite a few interesting things, some controversial things as well. Some things hopefully we'll have a good discussion about. Emma, Johnny, welcome to the show. Thanks, Vincent. Good afternoon, guys. Emma, I see you were posting on Instagram or something the other day. You are at the rugby, were you, down in Munster, was it? I was, yeah. I'm like a big rugby fan now. I've been to two matches this year and I still only kind of half know the rules. But um, it, yeah, it was grand. They got caught in the end. We actually went into the bar to watch the last 10 minutes because it was it was raining so bad. But uh, it, was, it was a good day out down there anyway. <laughs> Bigger crowd, I'd say, than you'd get at a race meeting. A, a very good crowd there now, to be, to be honest. I was surprised because like, the weather was terrible. But uh, yeah, great. And kind of great atmosphere around as well. Like the loads of, did loads of tents set up. And yeah, good, good kind of happy crowd around. Good stuff. Well, we'll, we'll keep it happy. Um, Constitution Hill looks like he's going to go straight for the champion order. Johnny, you'll have thoughts on this, will you? Yeah, like, I mean, I, I suppose, I don't know if there's an awful lot to be said for, for I was I was for a feature in the, the Irish Field kind of Cheltenham magazine there, and um, the, 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 when it goes to print, it's kind of going to be important because Mouse is de- deliberating whether or not to go to Leopardstown with the horse because it's a four and a half week gap from gentleman's game to um leopardstown to cheltenham and he's only actually run three times over fences so um to suppose trainers have their own way with horses particularly horses at the top level constitution hill obviously didn't make it at the weekend he's been you know he's been uh very sparingly seen once this season um it's not very flashy it's not exciting you know i i, I maybe state man will get a bit closer to him um but it's just it's a kind of a disappointing aspect of the top level where you know, we have non-events or no events in the case of Constitution Hill. And, you know, Nicky Henderson gets a lot of slack, but I don't think he's going to be changing at this stage of his life. No. The, the other thing from my side of it, anyway, looking at it is, the, the one thing for me is I don't really care whether he runs in Fontwell, Utoxid or wherever. I just want to see him turn up for the champion hurdle and win it again or put up a performance against Stateman or whatever ends up happening. Looking forward to that. Can't wait for it. I'd hate to think that something had happened to him along the way that he missed it because he went for some minor race that's my only thoughts and what do you think Emma yeah it's 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 a bit of a pity for fans I suppose like um wouldn't it be great to see him coming over there to the Dublin Racing Festival like imagine the crowd he'd draw there see him face off against Stateman like with Stateman having home advantage um look it's, it's Nicky's not going to do it like realistically maybe he might send him to Punchestown now since he's had a fairly quiet year until Cheltenham um but yeah, it's a pity for fans. Like maybe there's something like you can kind of understand Mouse sending gentleman's game straight there because he's he's a very fragile horse. Like you'd imagine he, he's trying to mind him as well as he can. Like and maybe maybe there is something with Constitution Hill that we just don't know. Maybe he's a bit more fragile than he seems. Um, I'd like to see him running more, but uh, yeah, I suppose we've gone on about it enough. Um, Henderson has plenty of critics, and look, he, he'll produce him to be there in his best form as champion hurdle, I suppose, which is. As much as we can ask for but it is just a pity like imagine the crowds he'd draw to, to not, um, um, a smaller race meeting outside the cheltenham festival i suppose yeah true well look one horse here that was a, a cheltenham festival winner twice uh, a plutard retired I, I don't know what to make of this because when he won his gold cup in 2022 by 15 lengths from manila indo he looked like an absolute star i thought it was some performance the way he powered up the hill and everything else but when you stand back and look at his career, it's it's a bit dodgy, is it? He'd only six wins um, in his career, and he didn't win again after winning the Gold Cup. I was just looking back at some of the, the races he ran in novice chases. He was beaten by a horse called Dr. Mikey, which I think is rated 95 over hurdles the last time that ran. Winter Escape beat him. Castle Grace Paddy. It's hard to believe he won a Gold Cup so impressively. What did you make of him, Johnny? Well, he was very uh, unique in the sense of the distance that he could be top class at, or certainly top class in his era. When he beat Shaq and Brassois over two miles, um, you wouldn't necessarily have seen him as, a, as you mentioned, a Gold Cup w- winner of, of 15 lengths. You know, he provided Darrow O'Keefe with um, a really great day when he beat Ken Boy in December of 2020. That was a, that was a super ride. Um, it's all very strange, really. What, what I suppose horses are horses like... I was surprised he beat Manel Indo uh, as well as he did. That probably wasn't the greatest Gold Cup. Um, Manel Indo, Protectorat was there, Galvin and Royal Pagai. Galvin was sent off 130. You know, Galvin is, is, isn't that sort of, you know, he's not really that bracket of horse. He shouldn't have been in that short in the Gold Cup. Manel Indo hasn't done a lot since, really, it has to be said. And uh, Aptutard, maybe he was a little bit flattered from 
the way the race was run on the day. Rachel was very good on him, but everything since then has just been very, very strange. You know, he's run to a rating of maybe 155 odd at entry, and other than that, has basically shown no form whatsoever. Um, so it's it's notable as well. Like this horse is basically retired almost as a nine year old. You know, he's just turned ten, and um, evidently uh, Henry de Bromhead is like, there's nothing left in this fella. Something's gone awry. But yeah, he was he's an incredibly uh, durable horse distance wise. Um, and I know horses are hard to keep right at the top level he's still run 23 times which isn't bad for a horse just turn from nine turned on 10 but um you know i've no explanation for where his his career has completely derailed um but luckily enough um as we saw at turles uh Sheevely park still had the first two kind of entered in the big race and we're happy to have Alaho as the winner yeah well we'll move on to that in a few minutes a couple of more things just to hit before we go into the the racing stuff itself is um a couple of referrals from last week that we had from the ihrb one of them is Patrick Mullins. We talked about that in our previous show that he'd been referred on over the incident at Christmas um, with Gaelic Warrior. What did you make of that, Emma? First of all, look, I suppose there was we weren't expecting a whole lot. I just thought it was a good idea that they at least brought him in, give him a wrap over his knuckles and send him on his way, which is more or less what they did. They didn't even give him the wrap on the knuckles, it turns out. I also note that this morning on the IHRB site, that referral doesn't appear there, which is a bit odd because they sent it out in an email um, last week. What did you make of that, Emma? Uh, yeah, I suppose, like, they gave him the warning. I, I wasn't really expecting him to be sanctioned a whole pile more than it, to be honest. Um, like, what were they really going to charge him with? Like, I, I don't really think he brought racing into dispute with the comments. I think they were probably taken, maybe not so much out of context, but, like, it was kind of a heat, the heat of the moment thing. He was interviewed straight after the race, um, you know, just after riding a, a grade one winner and had a bit of a fight, a bit of a fight with his cousin. But, yeah, like, I, I didn't really expect there to be a whole pile from it, to be honest. So I wasn't shocked by it. Um. I'm sure. I'm sure he he's he's apologised um, for the comments he made. Like it, it was it wasn't a great thing to say. Like optics wise, I suppose for people, um, it didn't sound great. But like I think you can always expect with the like I suppose the the question was like are they, you know, are the, are the horses being won to their merits? But I think like when you have Danny Mullins riding a Grade One horse, you're not going to have um, any any kind of race, race fixing involved. Like he's going to ride his race. So I think it was kind of a bit kind of it sounded a bit worse than it actually was. Is, is what I what I take from it anyway. I yeah. thought I thought this was all very odd because you know th- what how was he taking the game into disrepute by being very very honest and honesty is something that we shouldn't take for granted in racing because there's so much deception in the game like in terms of how horses are campaigned I mean you look at some of the um you know evidence given to stewards after races um you know in the turf club you know a, a lot of absolute waffle really and Patrick was extremely honest here he said after race um I told Danny, not to go up the inside because my horse is going to jump right. Basically, that was it. It's not in your business to do it. It's not in my business to do it. Um, and I'm paraphrasing here, but if you come up my inside, this could cause problems for both of us. It was never a suggestion of team tactics for me. And then I thought it was almost, I don't know why he, he nearly had to apologize to the IHRB for giving an honest interview afterwards because this would nearly tell jockeys, listen, don't say anything after it. It's not worth your while because it might land you in trouble. I, I, I was with Willie on this. I couldn't see why there was an issue here at all. It meant for brilliant TV. He was being being honest my horse jumps right don't go up my uh, inner that's all it was for me but you're paraphrasing there john he didn't say that that's not what he said he never what mentioned he the horse jumping right that's the issue yeah. with it that's that's why it's sorry it appeared it appeared as being something that could be construed construed as team tactics that was the problem he, he what he said afterwards was and i'm paraphrasing here but basically yeah. what he said was There'd i'm going to there move off the rail turning in I'm going to leave a gap in me and her don't come up with it. That's what he said, which, which mm. in fairs team tactics, that was the issue with it. And look, we know the horse jumps, right? We know all those things. And that's what he intended when he said it, but he didn't actually say that, which was mm. the reason it was referred on in my opinion. Anyway, anyway, move on to bigger fish. Uh, Tom and Omar trainer. He's been around a long time. There was a look forgetting about the, the real incident of it. If someone wants to read about it, it's in my blog this week. But the basic thing here for me is we have a trainer here who broke rules in a major way here um, and ultimately was found guilty of assaulting an IHRB official. And he got he got a fine of 10 grand and he gets banned for three years. But as is the case, or we've seen recently in other cases, he doesn't serve any of the three-year ban. It's suspended as long as he sticks to the rules for the next while, next three years, and doesn't re-offend, he will continue to train horses. What do you make of this, Johnny? This is this is major stuff, and it just it keeps happening. I'm presuming here, but I don't know this for a fact. But I'm presuming that the reason that they're not suspending these trainers with a Tony Martin incident earlier, 
a few weeks ago where he got a two year suspension of his license over an incident in Dundalk to do with um, a horse testing positive for prohibited substances. But basically, he doesn't serve any of his ban either. And the basic thing with the Tony Martin one, which I'm presuming is similar with the Tom and O'Mara one, is that they felt it would affect his livelihood and the livelihood of his staff and so on and affect owners in the yard and everything if they took the trainer's license away. So what do you make of this, Johnny? Is there, do they need a new approach here? Do they need to do something else with this? Yeah, I, I, your blog is, is spot on here. I suppose Patrick and and uh, Patrick's you know um, case with the IHRB would have gotten far more headlines than this um, on the basis that most people in, I suppose if you're reading the national paper, you won't necessarily know about Tom and Amara, but you will know about Patrick Mullins, even though you know they were, they were absolutely chalk and cheese in terms of the relevance of the cases here. Um, I I actually wasn't aware of this, and I, I I might even have been racing the same day because I've been at Limerick a few times this year, and I I interviewed Shark Hanlon one day at Limerick, where Shark had had a horse in the first race that had suffered an injury, and he wasn't happy with the ground, and he was quite keen to get an interview that day, and and Shark gave the interview, and he stated kind of his thoughts on it. Paul Maloney obviously was was the relevant man on the day, and and a few trainers had gotten on to me to say like you know it's good to have be good to get Paul on here as well, just to get the other side of it. And Paul Maloney came on and he justified um, what he'd done with the ground. It's really, really difficult, particularly the way the climate's going, really difficult to get the ground right. Um, and sometimes you might overwater, sometimes not. But in this instance, this happened in, what was it, the end of July. Um, and July was, I think it was one of the wettest Julys on record, if not, if not that. But if you read this case, I wasn't aware of this case actually until I read, I think, the Irish Times on Saturday. And then I, I was obliged to go back into my emails and read read the piece. Like what Paul Maloney has had to put up with here and 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 other members of the IHRB is absolutely scandalous. And whatever about like the, the accosting and and his his tie and shirt being left in an unkempt manner, I quote this from the piece. And um, Mr. Maloney stated that Mr. O'Mara shouted, hey, you nearly paralyzed my son. Now, Paul Maloney has kids himself. That is an absolutely outrageous thing to say to somebody. And if Paul Maloney were of a certain mind, it might take him a long, long time to get over a statement like this. It was an awful thing to say to somebody. I don't see any real retribution in the piece, apart from the fact that he accosted him and his phone had to be kind of blocked and all of this. Um, and he's basically, Tolman can kind of go racing again and has gotten a suspended sentence. I had massive respect for how Paul Maloney handled himself here. I thought it was totally, totally out of order what he had to deal with. And as far as I can see, as much as it's a suspended sentence, the, the guy who's um, at the heart of this, who obviously did feel like he had a grievance, and I've absolute respect for somebody whose son or daughter rides and all that that entails. Um, I thought this was deeply unsatisfactory. And I do wonder um, if you were a, an embryo sort of official for the turf club, who, like Paul Maloney, was a jockey one time and might want to join that kind of route. Would this fill you with confidence as to what happens in a case like this? I thought he was totally, totally out of order. Yes, but like forgetting about the individual case, just this is the second one we've seen recently where you have a trainer who has been suspended, licensed suspended for years, not just weeks or months, but for years, and they don't serve a single day of it. Mm. What do you think, Emmett? Did they need to look at this, this whole situation and what they're doing? Yeah, like whatever it is kind of the, the vast majority of trainer vans seem to be suspended sentences like it's it's kind of rare enough that the trainer will actually serve the this the sent like the kind of ones that come to mind i suppose like uh dennis hogan and got one recently and gordon obviously and one mcnally but like the vast majority will be suspended sentences um mm -hmm. I, i'd imagine i think your blog made an awful lot of sense like you were saying it's probably something to do with the loot the, the loss of a livelihood um you know staff and owners in the area being considered but I think you made a great point like that, you know, you said um, maybe the horses should be allowed one, but the trainer couldn't, wasn't allowed to be involved or something like that. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I think like th this, this was quite a serious one. Um, like you, you'd say something about maybe a lesser offence being suspended, but, you know, the, it was fairly serious. I think like the follow up with it, you know, the late night phone calls and stuff like that was kind of a, uh, was, wasn't a great, wasn't a great Look, and I, there was a similar case, I'm sure, a few years ago. Um, it wasn't actually a trainer, but an individ individual involved in racing. And I'm sure they were actually warned off the sport for six months, um, you know, which is, and it was kind of, it seemed a bit lesser, uh, less serious than this um, to me in a way. So, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think um, Paul Maloney would be too satisfied with it anyway. Like, I, I can't imagine if I was in his position, I would be. Um, it's, yeah, it, was, it, wasn't a, it was not a great look, I don't think. No. I agree. All right, look, we'll move on. A dream to share. Last year's champion bumper winner, 
Turns out he's had a couple of setbacks uh, getting himself ready to go hurdling. So he's not going to go hurdling for the moment, at least. And he's going to run in the Future Stars bumper that he won in Leopardstown at the Dublin Racing Festival last year. Grade two race for Future Stars. It's in the, the name what it's meant to do. And he's going to run in that again. And I see looking at the conditions of it, he doesn't there's no um condition in it that says that that a group or a grade one winner has to carry a penalty for that. They don't. So he'll he'll be off level weights with other horses that have won two or more bumpers. What do you make of that, Emma? Is this fair? No, I like. I think they have to really do something about this. Like, you, I, I suppose you. First of all, you can't blame connections for for targeting it. You know, it's it's a good opportunity for a horse like him. I suppose he's obviously had his issues this year. Like, there's I mean, there's two horses in that race, like Redemption Day and A Dream to Share. Like, Redemption Day was placed in the 2022 Punchestown Champion Bumper, and A Dream to Share won last year's Champion Bumper. So, like, those horses have been like going into their second, third years of bumpers, it's, it doesn't seem right for the actual, like, um, in the title future stars coming up and meeting these horses off level weights. Um, you know, it, the opportunity just shouldn't be there for them, I don't think. Like, restricted to one season in bumpers for any horse, especially for a grade one, any graded win, winning bumper horse, like, they should not be allowed to go back the following season and compete in a bumper, in my opinion, because I suppose, like, it's just... Bumpers are used to, to bring horses along, like um, it's a nice introduction to, to the racetrack. It's not like something you should be targeting grade one bumpers. Like you could run a grade one bumper there three years and oh, it seems a bit insane. Like if you start early enough, I think they can run until they're seven in a bumper at the moment. Like there's no stipulation as to like if you win a graded race, there's, you, there's no return. You can't go, you, you can still go back the next year. You can't go to the Cheltenham bumper, of course, but the rest of them, it's open. Um, Yeah, I don't, I don't like to see it in a way. It's kind of seems a bit pointless like I don't want to see the dream to share running in in a grade two bumper at the DRF like I'd rather see him running a maiden hurdle anywhere um it's just kind of it seems to be going backwards rather than forwards like if if he can jump a hurdle maybe keep him for the flat in the summer yeah turns out he or a horse could in theory win this future stars race four years in a row as a four-year-old a five-year-old a six-year-old and a seven-year-old which just seems absolutely madness but anyway Maybe they'll look at it. Maybe they won't. Um, one other thing there we see, Aidan McGuinness has said he's talking about running horses in the UK at these Sunday evening fixtures in the all-weather. What do you make of that, Johnny? Good move for Aidan. Yeah, like there was, uh, Eamon just brought this up before. I hadn't actually seen this before. Um, I was talking to Aidan last week. He had another winner at Dundalk as well Friday, and he's, he's definitely developing his team. I, I think, in fairness to Aidan, he's not afraid to send horses um wherever it is to win races i'm not mad on i'm not mad on the sunday evening racing but like as an owner i'd have no issue with it if if it's there it's there you know and as a trainer if if you think it's a good way to place your horse with the prize money absolutely um i i just don't necessarily think it's it's the i don't think going forward it's the best idea for for staff and i think having a sunday evening break for staff is a good thing but yeah i mean it's at the same time have horse will travel if if, if i i wouldn't have an issue running a horse in it if i owned or trained it yeah, you see people sending horses to the likes of Dubai for that winter carnival. I'm sure that that takes a lot out of staff going there too. Probably mm. a great trip, having said that. <laughs> but um, look, just going to Chelmsford on a Sunday night wouldn't be the end of the world from an Irish point of view. But you can see it from the UK point of view. You'd be hopping mad if you were working in the yard somewhere that had whatever four, five, six hour round trip to Chelmsford. It makes it a very late, a very late uh, finish on a on a Sunday night, and you'd like to think you would have been at home with your family long before that. But anyway, we'll move on. Last thing is horses to follow emma you're bound to have something fantastic for me here yeah i suppose it was great racing all weekend um plenty of chatting favors but i think uh the first race in navin um asian master i'd say he looks like a, a fairly good horse and he's jockey is probably one of the tallest jockeys right he must be six foot four six foot five thomas costello um it's actually funny we've only got a handful of mares here but we had that we have the dam of asian master with the dam the second horse of better days better days ahead as well so i wasn't sure who to be shouting for in that one but i think it like in fairness, he was getting fifteen pounds from the second horse, but I, I think he he could be a fairly progressive kind of horse. He he won a he won a Turles maiden there a couple of months ago, and the winner the second horse there went came out and won again. Won again, and I know Paul Town has, has spoken fairly favourably of, of him as well. So um, he might be like he's probably not going to be at the top of pegging order of Willie Willie's two mile hurdlers, but um, a nice horse to follow. He's a relation of age, Asian Maze, a good staying mare from years ago. So I say he 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 could be a nice one going forward. I remember Asian Mays, all right, yeah, very prolific winner. Johnny, have you won for me? Yeah, I, I, probably not the most obvious one. But I, I just keep, um, every time he runs, I'm very impressed with High Class Hero. I, I thought there was a, a question just coming into the straight at Turles yesterday. Very, very fair play to the horses and the riders yesterday. It was really bad conditions at Turles. I'm fair play to people 
uh, who turned up as well because it was an enjoyable day, obviously, with the storm coming in and all that. But um, high class hero, um, he, when he came into the straights, easy fella really put him up to it. But he kind of came back on the bridle quickly. He, he makes me wonder what Soleimani could have done if he'd um, stayed around. He, he's passed away, but he's gotten ruled the world. Um, uh, honeysuckle and and high class hero to name but three really good horses. Um, but he's loads of class this horse, and it's still hard to know how good he is. And um, I would be I'd be certainly reluctant to oppose him at Cheltenham. He, he's he's a horse that just keeps impressing me. Yeah, very good. One I liked from the weekend was um Harvard Guy, one in Navan, won his third handicap hurdle in a row for the Harties, owned by J.P. McManus. What's interesting here is he won off one hundred and nine, one hundred and nineteen. And then the last day, the weekend, he won off 131, still back from three to one into seven to four favour to, to win, and he does win again. All those wins on soft to heavy, and he's out of a presenting mare. I'd love to see him on a bit of better ground. That would be the, the one for me. It could be anything. They're talking about going graded races with him now, but he's one to watch. I think he'll win more races, Harvard guy. They're also talking about sending him over fences at some stage. Anyway, one last thing just is some of the other racing that took place last week. We saw some very good horses. What about Maureen? Faheen's relative, Emma, you've been singing his praises. Do you think he's or she is good enough? She she looked good enough anyway. Um, she she kind of reminds you of him as well. She's got that big white head. Uh, I think she's out of uh, half sister of Faheen's. I think that's the connection to it. But yeah, she, you'd you'd be fairly happy, you know, if you were part of that racing club. Um, just to be kind of connected to any horse who has a connection to Faheen, I suppose. But yeah, like kind of turning, like I, you'd be kind of slow enough to hype up these kind of well-bred mares, I suppose, in particular. Because a lot of the time they actually won't deliver on it. But like turning the in there and punching down, she went quite wide and you were kind of half thinking she's going to get swallowed up here. But she just absolutely took off, kicked on. Um, Yeah, I suppose like as, as bumper debuts go, they don't go much better than that. I think Faheen actually won his bumper and punched down as well in similar enough fashion. So um, the dream is definitely still alive with her. Yeah, gone. I think co-favourite or something for the Cheltenham bumper in anti-post betting at the moment. So, yeah, yeah, I don't think nice they're going to go for there. it, though. I think they're going Are to skip. they not? No. I, I, no. They were saying maybe Aintree, but I, 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 unless things have changed since then, but I think the original quotes were, they'll take it easy this year. Yeah, very good. And then the other big one was Johnny Alaho. Are we looking at a Ryanair winner again? Well... <laughs> Yeah, I like. I suppose there was there was a doubt maybe about you know, and he didn't, it's not that he ran badly in the King George, but um, I, I just a small bit disappointed in him. Maybe maybe it was a bit of a mad race to King George, but um, I think for me yesterday, the problem with yesterday is that on violin didn't run, which is grand. I mean, the ground did turn pretty bad. Um, I, I, I what was he? He was uh, he was actually reported coughing anyway. French Dynamite ran a stinker. Um, so that that left 20 to 1 Statler, who comprehensively outran appreciated. So I, I wouldn't read much into that, to be honest. I think he, he did it well, but I mean, he was beating horses. He'd be, he should be beaten comfortably anyway. He basically beat Statler by 13 lengths. So I, I don't know what we learned, but um, yeah, I'm sure he goes back to the Ryanair with a good chance. Yeah. Do you agree, Emma? I'd say so. Like I wouldn't, like, like Johnny, I wouldn't be getting, I wouldn't be running away with it. Um, like he did it easily. Like, but like Statler kind of being, being, being in second would make you question it because like he, he wants four or five miles, like not, not two and a half, like the Ryanair. But I mean, it's good, good performance. I'd say they, they seemed happy enough with him. I'd say like you know he's not the same horse that he was. Is kind of what I'd say. He's ten year old now. Like it's he's definitely um more vulnerable than he would have been going to previous Ryanairs. But definitely there with a chance. I don't think he'd be back in a run of five to two though. No, I'd agree. And Fern's luck would that interest you for the the amateur race in Cheltenham? Um, won a Hunter Chase, was it in in Thurles as well? Yeah, he looks the right one, doesn't he? I actually saw he I saw him winning in Drumahan earlier in the year, and he just has a serious turn of foot, like for a point to pointer. Um, you know, I'd say if if they if they went like conventional chasing, he'd be a fairly good, fairly good top top end handicapper, if not better. Like he's he's very immature. though, was probably the worry going to Cheltenham. Like he was still half keen going around Thurles. Um. He'll have to kind of control the energy he has. I think that's why they didn't go last year. Like he's kind of like a coil of spring. If he if he explodes in Cheltenham, it might be a worry. But definitely has the ability. Like if if he if he if he ran to merit at Cheltenham, he'd be very very hard to beat. I think David Christie didn't go there last year because I I think he felt he was he was at six. He was a little bit too young, and he obviously had Vosselace and for the race, and he's he's been represented by wing leader in this division as well. And David was kind of unwell around Cheltenham last year. And I was talking to his son um, of the same name, and um, we were just discussing, you know, what what they would do at the at the festival. But 
David has done very well since, I think. And it's just mad that he hasn't won the Fox Hunter because he's serious talent in this division. I I, I think this fella is the best of the three. Vossel has obviously become disappointing, but like he's a great way of going. I you know, I I, I think this going he's gonna take an awful lot of beating in the whatever they call the race now with Cheltenham. I think he's he's really gonna go there. Seven years of age. Um he's only had he's only had six chase starts, but he jumped so well and loads of class will love the ground. I'd be I'd nearly be having as one of the bankers in the meeting at the moment. Well. Wow. Big statement. We shall we shall end on that. Well done, guys. Thanks for all your contributions and thanks to those who've watched. And uh, leave your comments below if there's anything you want to say to us, give out to us about what we didn't say or didn't talk about or whatever else. And make sure to join us again next week and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.